New data coming in from the FDIC shows us that the entire banking industry is in big trouble with $517 billion in unrealized losses being reported while 63 lenders are now listed as being on the brink of insolvency. We've already seen a number of banks collapse recently in 2023 and these new signs are pointing to there potentially being a second wave on the way soon. But just how bad could things get and could the next banking crisis rival the global financial crisis that we saw back in 2008? Either way, it is something that people should really start to pay attention to. Unrealized losses on available for sale and held to maturity securities increased by $39 billion to $517 billion in the first quarter of 2024. Higher unrealized losses on residential mortgage-backed securities resulting from higher mortgage rates in the first quarter drove the overall increase. And this now marks the ninth straight quarter of unusually high unrealized losses since the Federal Reserve began to raise interest rates in Q1 of 2022. Now this is obviously very bad because it means that banks are likely to have liquidity issues in the future and could struggle to have the cash available to service deposit withdrawals for customers. Now in theory, unrealized losses are not a problem if banks are able to hold to maturity as banks will be paid face value and the unrealized loss will be wiped clean. However, in reality, we know that they do indeed matter a lot. This is because we've already seen four regional banks collapse in spring of 2023 thanks to depositors being spooked so much by unrealized losses that they started to withdraw their money at pace. This immediate requirement for cash to pay out on these withdrawals forced the banks to sell securities for heavy losses and did lead to there not being enough capital to absorb these losses without the banks collapsing. Liquidity problems also prevent banks from being able to lend out money to businesses or individuals which is also a bad thing for the banking sector because this is the main way that banks make money. We're seeing this start to take place already, as shown here by the quarterly change in loan balances, which saw a decline in total loans of $34.8 billion in Q1, while the annual rate of loan growth continued its decline. On a year-on-year -year basis, loan balances increased just 1.7%, which is the slowest rate of annual loan growth since 2021, and has steadily declined over the past year. We're also continuing to see a higher rate of delinquent loans mainly being driven by credit cards as the industry's quarterly net charge-off rate remained at 0.65% for a second straight quarter which is 24 basis points higher than last year and 17 basis points higher than the pre-pandemic average. And the credit card net charge-off rate was the highest that it has been since 2011. The number of banks on the problem bank list has also just increased to 63 for Q1, up from 52 in the previous quarter, with the assets held by problem banks increasing by $15.8 billion to now being at $82.1 billion. Now, banks on this list have a composite rating of 4 or 5 due to financial, operational or managerial weaknesses or a combination of all of these issues. Now, this is a sharp increase of 21.1% in just one quarter and does continue the concerning upwards trend that we have been seeing recently. However, in the grand scheme of things, these 63 problem banks do make up just 1.4% of total banks and when we look at how this stacks up relative to during the global financial crisis, we can see that it is still far lower than during this period in terms of both number of banks and also the assets held. So things are heading in a worrying direction, but ultimately this metric is not yet a massive concern. However, what is more of an imminent concern is commercial real estate, which does continue to be a giant problem for the entire banking sector, and the sector has been a ticking time bomb where it's only a matter of time before something big breaks in the banking system. Commercial real estate loans have not only been devalued because of the surge in interest rates that we have seen in the last couple of years, but the underlying value of the commercial real estate itself is also worth far less. Now, according to this Green Street Commercial Property Price Index, the commercial real estate sector as a whole is down 21% since March of 2022, where it peaked. And aside from the 2020 pandemic low, we are now at lows not seen since 2015, with some sectors like office buildings suffering from even more severe losses. 
Now with a massive wave of property debt maturing over the next three years, speculation is mounting that the US banking sector could succumb to another major crisis should CRE loan default rates climb to unmanageable levels. Now CRE loans make up about 25% of the average lender's assets and a whopping $2.7 trillion of aggregate bank assets, meaning that they are a significant representation of the total US banking system. Now many of these loans were issued at rock bottom interest rates and are now worth far less today thanks to interest rates surging over the last couple of years, forcing lenders to hold on to avoid selling at massive losses. Now, US banks currently hold $1.40 in reserves for every $1 of delinquent commercial real estate loans, which is far lower than the $2.20 that was recorded a year ago and is the lowest level in more than seven years. And what's even worse than that is that the average reserves at the big six US banks fell from $1.60 to $0.90 cent for every $1 of commercial real estate debt on which a borrower is at least 30 days late. Now this means that delinquent CRE loans, which tripled to $9.3 billion for these six banks last year, have now surpassed the amount that is being held in reserves at these banks to cover them, which could prove hugely problematic if these loans end up in default. And in fact, just the other day, Moody said at least six US regional banks with a substantial exposure to commercial real estate loans are at risk of having their debt ratings downgraded. We also saw, for the first time since the financial crisis, investors in top-rated bonds backed by commercial real estate debt are getting hit with losses. Buyers in the AAA portion of a $308 million note that is backed by the mortgage on the 1740 Broadway building in Midtown Manhattan did get less than three quarters of their original investment back early this month after the loan was sold at a steep discount. And according to Barclays, this is the first such loss of the post-global financial crisis era, which all five groups of lower ranking creditors were wiped out. Now, in order to help out banks that are at risk in order to avoid a new wave of banks collapsing, we could well see a return of the Bank Term Funding Programme, also known as the BTFP, which is an emergency lending programme that was created by the Federal Reserve in 2023 in response to the failures of Signature and Silicon Valley Bank. Now, the creation of this program did pump over $160 billion of liquidity into the economy between March of 2023 and January of 2024. And if we do see a new wave of bank failures and banks getting close to insolvency, then we are likely to see billions more be given out in loans from this program, which would pump more money into the economy. This would of course put upwards pressure on inflation, the very thing that the Fed is trying to tackle with these high interest rates. However, more money and liquidity in the system does generally lead to rising asset prices, and this is exactly what we saw when these loans were being given out from March of 2023 onwards. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100, which had both been trending downwards for about a year and a half, started to rise sharply back up at almost the exact same time that this liquidity started to be pumped into the system. And we did see very similar pricing action across the housing market too, with the Case Shiller Home Price Index surging since around March of 2023 as well, ending the slump that it had been in prior. Now ultimately, things are not looking great in the banking sector, and the sector is heading in a concerning direction. However, the risk of a massive 2008-style banking collapse does still look relatively low as of today, and in fact, even if we do see some more banks fail or get close to insolvency, it could just result in more money getting pumped into the economy to bail out these banks, boosting liquidity and boosting asset prices on the whole. Now we have spoken about commercial real estate being a problem for banks, but in the consumer residential housing market space, we are also seeing a number of concerning signs where the mortgage market is absolutely crashing. My previous video goes into more detail on this topic and the wider problems in the housing market, and you can check it out by clicking on screen right now. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, as that does help out the channel a lot, and thanks a lot for watching.